Hi guys, we are already in the second week after the global launch of Marvel Snap, which means that some of you must already be in Pool 2 or very close to getting into Pool 2. So I believe it is a good time to make a tier list of the cards that are in the Pool 2 so you know what is good and what it isn't so good, you know? I already did a tier list about the Pool 1 and if you haven't checked it out, you can check it out. I will leave the link up here. And as I said in that video, I tried that the tier list resembles a normal distribution. It doesn't have to be exactly a normal distribution, but at least resemble one. Because that means that the cards are like statistically correct, you know. Because not everything can be overpowered and not everything can suck. Because if everything is overpowered, nothing is overpowered. And if everything sucks, nothing sucks, you know. So... I try to uh, approach this as to get to a normal distribution, not necessarily exactly, but, so, but resemble one, you know. And also, I uh, rate cards like if we had all uh, the pools together, you know, all the cards in Marvel Snap together. I want rate cards as in only pool two. I rate them as if all cards were available because what I'm trying to do is to give you the real power of the card in the competitive meta, you know, in the in the ladder. Because if I if I compare pull two cards with only pull two cards, when you face people that have a pull three cards or whatever that they, they want, you won't be able to compare the power of the cards, you know? So I will give you the real data with the real meta about these cards. So I hope you enjoyed the tier list. This, the pool two is much, uh, it has less cards than pool one. So the, the video must be shorter and I hope you enjoy and that you learn something and that you like the tier list, enjoy. So we start right here with Rhino. So Rhino is one of those cards that can help you a flip allocation we refer to flip allocation when when we don't like allocation we want to flip it to something else rhino is one of the cards that can help you do that the other cards that can do that are uh, a scarlet witch from the pool one we already talked about her the other card is a storm we will which we will talk later she is here in the pool two and the other one is magic and she is from pool three so the flip cards are pretty good but from all of them rhino is the worst it takes away a little bit of the rng because scarlet witch gives you a random location and rhino you just know that it will destroy the location and and it ha it will have no ability and that seems cool but he also costs three energy and only gives you three power which isn't really good so rhino can be cool if you need something with three power like in a cerebral deck and something that can flip a location but outside of that he isn't really played that much because you could play scarlet witch which is a 2-3 intrinsically better and you can play a storm and we will talk about the strong uh, power later so rhino for me is a c tier rhino is a c tier now we have a scorpion a scorpion used to suck because as you can see here he used to be a 3-3 but now he's a 2-2 and a 2-2 he's really powerful you can play him in turn 2 and hit a lot of power uh, a, a lot of cards in the opponent's hand and reduce a lot of power from him he's an unreveal he can trigger twice with a wong or with a kamatash and yes scorpion is being really played right now in a lot of different decks scorpion is very strong right now i like him a lot even when you don't play him in turn two he can be really good and in turn two he is really strong so i will give an a to scorpion now we have shang chi one of the most powerful control tools in the game shang chi can completely destroy the enemy and sometimes it is unexpected because you can kinda expect the enemy to destroy something big with a Shang-Chi, but you never know if they are really playing him, you know. Not every deck has him, so you, you don't really know if they are going to Shang-Chi you. 
but as one of the strongest control cards in the game, Shang-Chi must land in the A tier because he's really strong and he can turn a game. He can win games, uh, he can surprise the opponent, he can do a lot of things and I like Shang-Chi a lot and he lands in A for sure. Now we have a Storm. A Storm is another one of those cards that can flip a location. And she has less power than Rhino. So what makes Storm special? Well, what makes Storm special is that she flips a location to something called a flooring area. And what is a flooring area? A flooring area is a, is a location where you can play cards for one more turn. And after that, the location will get uh, locked. And nobody, nor you, nor the opponent can play cards there. So that gives you kind of some control in the game and that's why a storm is good because you can if you can kind of predict where the opponent is going to play cards you can play a storm in another lane and now you have the advantage in that lane he will play a card but, but you but you will also play a card and you already have an advantage of two power so if you know how to use a storm you can immediately win a location and you can even combo her with other type of cards like a uh, juggernaut a juggernaut move cards and juggernaut is a pull three card but, but this is one of the most popular combos in marvel snap you storm one turn and the next turn you juggernaut and whatever the opponent plays is gonna get moved and you secure that location but that is not the only uh, way you can use a storm you can use her with something like a sunspot that grows larger and you can grow your sunspot and later take over that location you can even push power in the storm lane with cards that summon things like a white tiger like a doctor doom so a storm can give you a lot of utility that's why a storm is so powerful a storm is played in a lot of decks in a lot of different strategies and that's why a storm is an s tier card i love a storm it is a great control card and and you can find her in a lot a lot of decks so i love a storm and yes she is definitely an s tier card and not only in pool 2 she's an s tier card in all of marvel snap now we have sunspot again another strong card you can find sunspot in a lot of different decks in a suit deck in a control deck in in a destroyer deck in all type of decks sunspot is never a bad choice he's always good he's great turn one he's great in, in whatever turn he makes it that you don't waste energy if you don't have if you don't have anything to play he can fit a lot of strategies she has the cool infinite combo where you don't play anything turn five and sunspot get the, gets the power from the energy and turn six you place your you play your infinite sunspot is great and i know and i think you know where this is going of course sunspot is in the s tier category now we have swarm swarm used to be one of the strongest cards in the game and swarm wasn't nerfed but what was nerfed was the archetype where, sw where swarm where swarm was played you know and that weakened swarm swarm is still the same card and i still like swarm and i still believe it is pretty strong and it's pretty cool but since it is played less because the archetype is weaker and the archetype was the the one discard when you discard everything and in turn six you dump your entire hand with a lot of swarms and that isn't played anymore because there are other cool uh, discard decks or the discard archetype in general is weaker uh, Swarm isn't as strong as he once was, so right now Swarm is a bit car. We have the Collector. The Collector also used to be one of the strongest cards in the game, where because once upon a time he got two power every time you got another card into your hand that it wasn't from your deck, but now he only gets one power, so he isn't as powerful, but he's still cool. He finds play in some decks, most of all in the Di Devil Dino deck and in the Bounce deck. The Bounce deck where you bounce your cards with Beast and Falcon. If you are new to the game, maybe you don't uh, know the Bounce deck, but it is a somewhat competitive deck that swarms the board. And 
uh, that deck is good for the collector and of course the, the the classic devil dino deck the collector is good but not as powerful as he once was so he's a bit tier card right now i like him but this is the reality the infinite the infinite is a great card for control and he's also a great card for hela and a great card for uh, big discards with uh, something like a ghost rider and he's also played in the log your deck so you can see that infinite is played in several decks the infinite is cool he's great but you have to be really careful when playing him and if the draws don't go your way he can be a dead card so i tempted to put the infinite in the a tier because he has a, he offers a lot of power and under the right circumstances he will be free but if the circumstances doesn't present themselves, he's kind of a dead draw. So I am also tempted to place him in the B tier. I will place him high in the B tier. I don't order this by power, but I but I place him here so you know that he's like an in-between in, in, in A and B. He can be A, he can be B. Just look at it this way. If you believe he's a B, he's a B. If you believe he's an A, he's an A. He can be either in either of those. Now we have Vision. I'll be honest, I don't like Vision. I believe Vision sucks. The ability can be kinda cool because you can fool the opponent with the movement and that is great, it's unpredictable, you don't know what the opponent is going to do with the movement. But he only offers 7 power for 5 energy and if you're playing in the 5th turn you can only move in once. So he's like an expensive Nightcrawler, a worse Nightcrawler. Uh, the way you could take advantage of his ability was if you, if you could play him earlier, you know, so you can move in several times. But played in the fifth turn, you will only move in once, so you aren't taking advantage of his ability. I don't like Vision, and maybe I'm wrong, but I will put him in the C tier because he he could he for me he could even be in the in the D tier because I don't like Vision at all. I never see him played in any type of deck, and yes, he sucks. <laughs> now we have Vulture. Vulture is a cool card in terms of design. I like him a lot. He gets a lot of power and he can get really big, but he is only played in the movement archetype. You won't see a Vulture played outside the movement archetype, and right now the movement archetype sucks. That is the reality. It is a cool decking concept. It is really fun to play, but it sucks. It is not competitive. So if the only deck where Vulture is played sucks, you can really give a lot of a lot of uh, rating to Vulture. But since he's a cool card, I won't let him in the C tier. I will place him in the B tier because he can offer a lot of power. But at the same time, he could be in the C tier because he's only played in one deck and that deck isn't strong. So, you know, B or C. I will leave it in B because it, it is like a personal bias. I like Vulture, you know. Bucky Bans. Bucky Bans is played in a lot of decks, bro. He's played in the Destroyer deck, in the Death deck. He's played in two decks with the Destroy... Uh, with the Destroy combo you know with a carnage or with a deadlock even if the deck isn't uh, revolving around the destroy mechanic you can uh, slap a bulky barns plus carnage plus deadlock and, and nothing else with destroy and that is great because that combo is so powerful you know so uh, his presence is overwhelming in the marvelous Namera. you will see bulky barns a lot right now so I believe he's and, and he's really strong. He's really cool. You can take advantage of uh, locations like this domain where you can safely play Bucky Barnes. So I like this card. He could easily land in the S tier, but I will place him in the A tier because it is a cool card and, and he's prevalent. But he's a game-winning card, you know. And Storm and Sunspot are game-winning cards. Morbius again, Morbius used to be really strong when the swarm archetype was strong but he lost a lot of power after that archetype was nerfed he still sees plays in archetypes that discard a lot of cards but those archetypes aren't as strong right now but still morbius can be cool can be strong if you know how to play him so 
he will land in the B tier. He's not the best, he's not the worst, he's cool right there. Now we have Sabertooth. For some people, Sabertooth is one of the worst cards in the game because he doesn't see any play, his ability is kinda meh. But I believe he has potential and he's sometimes played in the Carnage plus Venom deck. And I believe he has potential in that deck with a, in that deck playing with a death. So I don't believe he's in D tier, but he for center for certain isn't any higher than C tier. I will play placing in C tier like a personal bias because I like him and I believe he can be cool with a Venom. But that's all the card can offer for now. So he could easily land in the D tier for sure. Now we have Cloak. Again, Cloak is a, a is a card with a strong ability, but that on, but but that really only sees plays in the movement deck, and that deck isn't as strong. But in that deck, Cloak is one of the better cards, and I believe that it could potentially some someday appear in another deck that isn't the movement archetype because the ability is pretty cool. So I will place Cloak in the B tier because. It offers some uh, cool opportunities uh, with movement, you know. Now we have Warpath. I'll be honest, I don't like Warpath, but personally I don't like the card. But the card is strong right now and it is played in the Destroyer deck. And that deck is one of the better decks right now. But the deck doesn't need Warpath to win, you know. It is a cool card that, offer, that offers a lot of power in that deck because with that deck you only look to win two lanes so you leave one lane open and that gives power to Warpath. That's why Warpath works in that deck, you know? So it is a strong card there. But outside of there, Warpath sucks because you don't want to have a lane without cast. You, you want to push power in all three lanes. You want to contest all three lanes because that makes that the opponent has to take over two lanes to win you, not just one, you know? So that's why Warpath sucks and I don't like Warpath. But he's strong right now in the Destroyer deck. So I, I, I have to give him at least B because he's winning right now. So we will give Warpath a B tier. We have Agent 13. Agent 13 sees a lot of play in different decks. She's played in the City Road 2 deck. She's played in the Collector plus Devil Dino deck. She's played in the Bounce deck that I talked about earlier with Beast and Falcon. She's played in the Sue decks. So Agent 13 is a staple of several decks in Marvel Snap. She's pretty cool. The ability is cool. But at the same time, it's nothing as crazy you know it is some basic card that just sees play because it is cool so we will place her in the b tier she's cool she's good she's played a lot but she doesn't offer anything mind-blowing so you have to place her any higher ebony mo is similar you can see Ebon being, uh, you can see ebony mo played in some decks but the deck that i see him the most is in the spectrum deck where you need ongoing cards and ebony mo has a drawback in his ongoing but it is an ongoing card so he gets the buff from spectrum outside that deck i don't see him played anywhere because the drawback is pretty bad but at the same time that deck is strong enough to guarantee him a b tier because that is one of my favorite decks right now that deck is pretty cheap to build, it is a kind of budget deck and it is very good and I recommend the ongoing Spectrum deck to everybody even if you don't have Wong, you don't need Wong to win with that deck even if you don't have Wong, you can build the Spectrum deck with ongoing I made a video about that deck, I will leave the link up here and you can go see it I recommend that deck to climb a lot it is an easy deck, it is a consistent deck and it is a strong deck Ebonimo is in that deck and and even if Ebonimo has a bad ability I have to place him here because he forms part of that deck and that deck is very good Hobgoblin Hobgoblin is popping off right now because he is part of the destroyer deck that is everywhere on the ladder right now and Hobgoblin is pretty good 
So I don't have much to say about how Goblin more than he's good that he's played in the Destroyer deck. So he's in the A tier. One of the cool things about Hobgoblin is that you place it in the opponent's uh, board and you take away one space where he can play one card. So that is pretty cool. Of course, you can do that with Green Goblin, but Green Goblin is a tier 3 card and he's better because he only costs 3 energy. But uh, Hobgoblin is pretty cool too and he's at least an 8 card. Iceman is great, I love Iceman, the ability is very good if you can play him in the first turn because you disrupt the opponent plays. Even in the second turn, it's good because you have the, the most uh, opportunity to hit something good with the Iceman. And yes, it is a cheap card, it is played in a lot of decks, a Sue deck, he's played in an ongoing, in, in an unrevealed deck, he's played in the Cerebro 2 deck. I like Iceman a lot, but he isn't anything game changing, so he's a bit tier card. Jubilee. Jubilee was one of the best cards in the game when she was guaranteed to pull America Chavez. It was one of the most broken combos in the game. You always pulled America Chavez when you played Jubilee, and that was a guaranteed 11 points because America Chavez used to give you uh, 10 points. Th that was a guaranteed. 11 point play with only 4 energy, that was great, but now since Jovili can pull anything and not just the America Chavez, she isn't as cool, so I will place her in the B tier because she's strong, she's cool, but not as strong as she was before and she doesn't see as much play, I only see her played right now in the Unrevealed deck with Odin and on the Lockjaw deck, both are cool decks but aren't the strongest decks either, so Cheese in the B tier. Leech sucks. I don't like Leech. I don't see Leech played anywhere. Nobody even knows that this card exists. Leech sucks. Nobody gives a fuck about Leech. He could be cool if he was, uh, if he cost less energy, but at five energy, he sucks. So he will land in the D tier. I don't care about Leech. I sometimes I don't even remember that he exists. So yes, Leech sucks. Now we have Nakia, and I will I, I will write both of these cards at the same time. Nakia and Okoye, they were two of the strongest cards in the game once upon a time. But right now, they aren't as strong, and now they suck. I don't like the way they are designed right now. They don't provide much. Nakia only targets two cards in your hand. That isn't a lot of power for three energy, so I don't like her. A little bit right now for me she's a C tier and Okoye is the same. She buffs the your deck, but if you don't play her at least in the second turn, she sucks and, and it isn't a lot of power what she provides, so she can be a deck draw later in the game. I don't like Okoye. These cards aren't played in practically any deck right now because they are too weak, so they land in the C tier. And yes, bro, right here you have the tier list of the pool two. I believe this is a pretty accurate uh, tier list. You could disagree in some things, like the Infinite could be an A, or maybe the Sabertooth could be a D, but this is something that is pretty, pretty close. Storm and Sulspot are S tier for sure. And yes, I hope that this helps help you to understand more the meta game and what cards are strong, what decks are strong. And that you can use this knowledge to your own deck building or to uh, decide what deck you want to play. And yes, bro, enjoy your games. And thank you very much for watching. If you are still here, thank you very much. You're awesome. I hope you enjoyed the tier list. And if you did, please consider leaving me a like and subscribing to the channel. I upload videos every day about Marvel Snap. You can also follow me on Twitch. I stream live in my channel. Yasarus, I will leave the link down in the description. You can also follow me on Twitter. I post there every time that I upload a video on where I go live on Twitch. I will leave the link down in the description. And yes, bro, thank you very much. You're awesome. I hope you enjoyed and remember, as the great Bill Hicks said, this is just a ride.